Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to announce that smooth sack summer is officially upon us. When you're playing in the summer sun, make sure you're groomed from pubes to bum. Thanks to our friends at Manscaped, you can make this season your smoothest yet. The Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is the ultimate bundle to keep your boys downstairs cool while looking hot. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer. Get 20% off plus free shipping when you go to manscaped.com and use the code THPN. The Manscaped Performance Package 5.0 Ultra has everything you need to prepare that summer bod. Every man knows how scary it can get when going for a close shave below the belt. That's why I trust Manscaped for all my sensitive areas. Inside this package, you'll find the star of the show, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Their fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. We also have dual LED spotlights to provide contrast on multiple skin tones, three length setting combs, and oh, did I mention this summer, this trimmer is waterproof too. Beach, lake, or shower, this razor will devour even the strongest pubes. Now that you have the perfect haircut, use Manscaped's liquid formulations to keep that freshness even at the hottest summer barbecues. The Crop Soother Aftershave Lotion and Crop Preserver Anti-Chafe Ball Deodorant. Once they touch your sack, you'll never go back. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 5.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. More wet products? Say no more. Manscaped's new Buff Bundle is all you need to keep the summer heat a breeze. This bundle includes their signature silicone scrubber and body wash. Ditch your nasty loofah and grab a taste of freshness. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code THPN at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code THPN at manscaped.com. It's smooth sack summer boys. Get on board or get left behind. Just a quick word from our sponsor. Bet the action on the ice with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use the code THPN. New customers can get 150 bucks instantly in bonus bets for betting just $5 on hockey. That's code THPN. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. Crown is yours. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY at 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, you must be 21 years of age or older and age varies by jurisdiction. This offer is void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash hockey for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. NHL and the NHL Shield are registered trademarks of the National Hockey League. Copyright NHL 2024. All rights reserved. Now back to the show. You're listening to the Hockey Podcast Network, your home for hockey talk covering every team in the NHL. New episodes every Monday. Download at the hockeypodcastnetwork.com or wherever you get your podcasts from. What up, Sea of Red? You're listening to Into the Flames, a Calgary Flames fan podcast. Your home for all things Flames and updates around the NHL. With your hosts, Raja Burry and Noah Eppleston. Into the Flames, new episodes every Sunday. Probably some validity, even if it's not entirely accurate. But for it to drop immediately, like tonight. Right, the day before? Yeah, I was not expecting it. That's huge. Okay, I'm just going to double check. It's no retention, right? Yeah, no retention. Okay. Which is insane in and of yeah. itself, if I'm being honest. Like, what? <laughs> and for next year's 2025th, that belongs to Colorado. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So it's a late it's a late second, but still a second. That's more than what I thought we'd get, if I'm being okay, honest. Okay, so we have, what, 29 mil in cap space now? Yeah, only Utah, Oof. Anaheim, Detroit, Jeez. San Jose have more cap space than us. <laughs> that's crazy what world is this like, this is insane and then you look at like two four six eight oh man how many picks in the first first three rounds over the next three years then two four six eight ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen yeah so he's added seven additional picks in the first top three in the first three rounds over the next three years that's crazy and they're not for like 
poor pieces, like quote unquote. Like no, like, exactly. It's just like selling off, right? Yeah, I feel like be the best guest for this one because you're like the number one. I'm the number one stand. Yeah. Know, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is up, guys? Here's a late sort of trade reaction uh, featuring myself and Mike from In the Dome. And uh, Andrew Mangiapane has just been traded to the Washington Capitals in exchange for a 2025 second rounder. That's Colorado's pick in obviously next year's draft. I said 2025, pretty self-explanatory. What are your thoughts? Oh, man. (laughs) Well, my number one thought is I now have no current player jerseys. The Thanos snap, everybody's jersey, like nobody has any jerseys anymore, unless you bought like a Hubert or Caudry jersey, which Caudry I can understand, but um that was the last one so i gotta get a new jersey now so that was my first thought um you know like i think obviously what i think we had kind of heard rumblings there was an appetite for both player and team to potentially part ways i don't think we all thought it would happen this soon so i think that's the one surprising thing like what maybe you pump pump his value up let him have a good season see what we can get from the deadline But I mean, one thing Craig has shown his GM is that he doesn't mess around, which I like. He's not playing games. And if you meet his price point, then he'll pull the trigger on our deal. So I thought it was a pretty good deal, especially it kind of gets kind of gets tingles in your jingles, given that it's tomorrow's the draft is right on the eve of the draft. You wonder what he's cooking up. I mean, from Mangiapane's perspective, I've always loved Mangiapane. I think he's a great player. I think for a sixth round pick for a guy to turn into what he's turned into is an absolute crown in the flames drafting achievements so i've always really liked him but at the same time it's like he doesn't fit what is he 27 28 next year Mm. yeah like he's he's not part of the plan he doesn't fit the timeline he's making a lot of money they just cleared out another almost six million dollars we now have like 29 million dollars in cap space like the possibilities are endless right now so while i'm sad to see him go it's like i've already had like my heart and liver and, and lungs removed, like everyone's gone. So this is just like one more, one more thing. Right. So I think yeah. it's a good, I think it's a, I think a great job by Conrad. Cause I don't think if you had asked most flames fans, what could you get for Andre Mangiapane right now today? I don't think a second round pick would be come to mind given the season he just had, given how much money he makes. So the fact that he able to, he was able to turn him into a second, I think is huge. And the fact that he just did it right now before the draft also opens up a lot of different interesting possibilities, especially given that pick is next year, like you said. Um, whether the Flames look to move up or, you know, package and draft assets for something else, I think he just opens up more opportunities for Craig. Because we were just looking at it. He's They now have, what, 16? 16, 16 picks in the next three years over the first three three rounds. So he's added seven, he's added seven picks in the top three rounds over the next three years. That's crazy. No, he's cooking up something. Yeah. And I guess, you know, reiterating the whole cap space thing, only Utah, Anaheim, Detroit, and San Jose have more cap space than us at this juncture. Hey, it's not a rebuild though. Hey, I think it's a rebuild. I think it's a rebuild. (laughs) uh, We've traded everybody. There's no one left. You look at our draft cup board and you look at Chicago's, we have more picks than Chicago. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So (laughs) Craig, you, you know, Craig has just pretty much like, fooled the owners into being like it's it's a retool guys it's a retool it's a retool and he smirks over the fans he's like no it's for it's rebuild baby he like looks at iggy he's like only yeah understand what we're doing (laughs) (laughs) exactly (laughs) oh man but yeah so like you said prior like with the whole not many flames fans probably would have assumed that manjapani would go for a second round at pick at this stage i mean he was on a 5.8 av flames did not retain here so that's, I think, a pretty big deal in and of itself. I always figured that, you know, shedding him would have had to involve retention in some capacity. But here we are. And I don't know what the Capitals are doing, to be honest. But I'm- yeah, it's kind of a weird move. Like, I just I think he's still a really, really good player. And I know a lot of Flames fans are like, like I just said, right? Like, what could you get a second round pick? Like, mm, I don't know. But I think that's given off the, the last year he had. Like, he had a shoulder problem the year prior. But I still think he's a really good player. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of a weird fit on Washington, I think. I mean, they're kind of taking on some like rec- some chances on guys, reclamation projects like PLD and, and Mangiapane. Not sure how well that's going to work out for them. But I do think like Mangiapane, like what, 27-year-old in a contract, 28-year-old, I guess, tw- in a contract year, looking for a new deal, given his skill set, given his ability, like he could be 
I always kind of compare him to like Blake Coleman. Like when Blake Coleman went from New Jersey to Tampa Bay, that's the kind of player Monji Pawnee is. Right. And, you know, he didn't score a lot of goals the last few years. That's not really his game. And we probably kind of unfairly uh, judged his game based on that 35 goal season in 21, 22, which I mean, for me, like I thought that was going to be the beginning of his career as like a Selkie, a perennial Selkie guy. Eh, I guess not, but he's still like, you look at his underlying numbers, maybe not so great this past year. The Flames weren't a very good team overall, especially defensively. So that impacted that. But I mean, the year prior, he was still, he's still always putting up the underlying numbers. He's still always creating scoring chances when the, on, on the ice. His skill set is still very strong two way play. So I think he's a good addition to any team. So it's not like they're getting some bum. Would you believe me if I told you he won the Pacific two years ago or what? We did? Yeah. When did that happen? That happened two years ago? <laughs> How many players are left from that team? Surely, well, surely we, we won the two Pacific two years ago. Um, had the best line in hockey. I think Johnny Gaudreau like set the record for plus minus in a season since like Wayne Gretzky or something. Um, three 40 goal scores. Surely that team. How many 30 goal scores? Like four. Surely that team would have won more than one playoff round, right? Yeah, so only four guys remain. Uh, That's Blake wild. Coleman, Blake Coleman, Rasmus Anderson, who's probably in shambles right now that his buddy just got shipped. Michael Backlund. Oh, man, poor Ras. Like, that's it, those four. That's crazy. Poor no. Rasmus. Oh, yeah. Rasmus has played on Manjipani's team. Like, they've played together for their whole career. So. And, I mean, that's not even discounting the fact that we've got new management and coaching staff, too. Dude, right? it's wild to think of the journey we've been on in the last two years from, like, can is there anything even comparable to being like legit cup contender with like two of the best players in in the league to like a Vesna nominated goalie Jack Adams winning coach to like we have more draft picks than Chicago and have 30 million in cap space and like no one on the team it's crazy See, like the the my brain goes to like Ottawa, like when they were in the cup final against the Penguins. Yeah, yeah, and then like, Carlson and Stone. Yeah, yeah, and then like the year later, it's like, oh, just kidding, we're rebuilding now. And yeah, yeah, that was a choice. Like the rebuild was like on purpose. Like we're gonna tear it down the studs. Our rebuild is like, oh well, oh sh, we planned yes. it at work, So <laughs> poor, poor Huberto, man, he goes from like watching his old team win the cup to watching the Flames completely tear it down. And I'm pretty or sure Japani is like one of his like best buddies on the team too. Oh so, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Anyways, a, Manch had a great, I think six round pick. Like I said, always been one of my favorites. Had some great moments here. Had a great, um, I remember the game one against Colorado when he scored that sweet goal. Um, game five against Dallas in 2022. He sets up the back end goal that ties it. Scores the bar down sick game winner. Place went nuts. So yeah, it's been like, a blast, oh, Manji. Yeah, dude. Like all, all the I think all the memories of Mang are like purely positive. Like this dude is a oh yeah, dude, like one of the best stories I think to ever come out of I think the NHL period, let alone our franchise. To be honest, yeah, one hundred percent. Six round draft pick. Never would have thought he would have made it to what he is today. Why don't we quickly talk about the draft? Do you have a prediction for sure. a nine or sure? Do you I've like lo- I've, I've I don't want to jinx it, but I've locked in. I've the double down and being like we're getting Tige. I don't think that's gonna happen. But yeah, um, my gut wants it to happen so bad. The number of grown ass men that will be crying in front of their TV. Oh, yeah. If it happens, dude, like I'll be out. So I'll just yeah, just yeah. do it for the vibes. And I'm not even kidding. Like, I know you have a team to run, but like we're going to be we're going to we're tanking next year. We're going to be picking in the top three at this rate. There's no one on our team. So this year, I don't think it's a bad year to like take a vibe pick and be like, hey, we didn't get the best player, but we did get an again. Yeah, so like, I'm we, still we, doubling down on Iggy, but yeah, we we only got the player like the entire fan base is gonna fall in love with. Like, don't worry about it. Yeah, exactly. Don't. Yeah, it's not, no problem. <laughs> so I don't really have a feel on it to be honest, because it's so variable and we haven't really heard. I I would imagine it's gonna be a centerman that Conroy's targeted because that's the only thing he's really said right about it. Mm-hmm. So that's really the only thing you can maybe guess is that he's looking for a centerman, whether that's Cat and I don't think Lindstrom's getting there. Tiege is, I guess, maybe projected to play some center, but it's, he, I think he's looking for a sentiment if he can. So, yeah. And I mean, like, it's weird. Like, Mackenzie's final ranking, Hellenius was ranked nine. Yeah. Yeah. And like, with all the conversations that I've, I've had, like, it seems like Hellenius's ceiling is more so like second line center, mm-hmm. like a really good, like, two way guy more than a pure, like, offensive producer. Right. So, 
I don't know. Like they could, I, I, I would think from like a flashiness perspective, maybe Catton has a little bit more upside. Yeah. Catton dropped in McKenzie's final list. Like right. spots, he's at 12 now after Beckett Seneca. So I don't know, but I think just from a center perspective, I feel like the coin toss would be between Tej, Berkeley, and Hellenius. In my opinion. Yeah, I mean, you really of- can't go wrong, can you? Yeah, like just based off what we've heard Craig say. So yeah, I think Hellenius. I, I I think most people are sleeping on Hellenius, myself included. It's kind of like he doesn't, like you said, have that flash. Like I mean, he put up for what for the numbers he put up in Liga, pretty good. Yeah, they don't. It's pretty good. So, you know, I've talked to a few people who are like, you know, like he's the real deal. He does have a lot more offensive upside if somebody gets him at 10, 11, 12, 13, they're getting a steal. So Mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't be the vibes. But I mean, maybe in five, six years, we're looking at the guy we got as our Alex Barkov. So that guy just won the cup. So, uh, yeah, you know, (laughs) yeah. You can have worse picks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think no matter who they're getting, unless they pull a Mark Jankowski out of their hat, we're going to be pretty happy. Or yeah. a Brent Cron. Or a... <laughs> when did Cron go ninth? Yeah, Cron went ninth overall. Or like a... I don't know. There's some bad picks in there. The, the Flames have picked some bad picks in the top 10 before, so... And I mean, uh, Craig talked briefly today about like a little free agency preview, kind of talking about how like he's going to be targeting defensemen, it seems like. Shipping off Mange opens up spots for Pelche and Coronado on the wings too, like yeah. top nine. So it was clear that like we felt that there was going to be a winger or two potentially being shed to create that, you know, create that space. But um, yeah, in regards to free agency coming up on Monday, he was talking about, you know, looking in the defense and maybe adding a veteran goalie to help, I guess, be a third string to Wolf and Vladar because you're going to need a third guy in case yeah. Death, one of them, you know, goes down. But yeah, there we go. Well, I think too, just to finish on the free agency thing, like I don't think it's the worst idea to bring in like somebody who would be comparable to Mangiapane on a shorter term, higher do- dollar deal. Like I know the name Jake DeBrusque is out there, and I know a lot of Flames fans like kind of shudder and be like, "Hey, that means we're like trying to compete or or whatever." Like I don't think it would be that. It'd just be you know adding another asset, and if you can turn the cap space that you use to get a second from Mangiapane into Jake DeBrusque and then flip him down the line, like that's essentially adding. Jake DeBrusque, who could turn into something plus a second for Mangiapane. So this deal today just opens up a lot of different possibilities. Yeah, exactly. Plus, who wouldn't want to see Louis DeBrusque kid play for the Flames? That'd be amazing. It would, it would brighten up the broadcast a lot. <laughs> then I, he, could, he might tone down the Oilers glazing just a little bit. Slightly. Just... Yeah. But yeah, I think that's that pretty much covers covers this so if you guys like this episode hit the like button comment subscribe go check out in the domes podcast oh, they're over at flames nation now they're they're big yeah. time right? i guess yeah they let's tell go. me <laughs> <laughs> i mean hey definitely, you definitely have... shouldn't be there but whatever i guess this is hey, my life now. You, you don't have to read a manscaped ad and like, <laughs> with like the most monotone voice but yeah if you guys like this stay tuned for more content so thanks for listening